from June 20th, uh, 2021. Interesting night. My dreams were unusual. Uh, what I called, I didn't really fall asleep until about 6 o'clock in the morning. So, kind of shifted my schedule for things. Take and tell you, my isn't always what it's cracked up to be because. doesn't always fall asleep uh, until after the mind really calms down enough. So you end up staying awake longer than you should and that kind of creates an issue. So that's kind of where we are today, where we are right now. And then we're riding along. We do have a conversation once again. And it's because Lionel is it's because the Lionel is, is situated the way he's situated. Uh, if, and he makes statements that he doesn't clear up. One needs to consider perspective. And the perspective is how you see something. And you don't only need to see your perspective, but you need to see other people's perspective. And his complaint about the left line paradigm and you don't know what a Marxist is and you know what a leftist is, is, let's put it as kind this way, it's improperly defined. It needs to sit within the context of a larger sense. In other words, uh, yes, there isn't a left right paradigm, but it shifts to something else. The left right paradigm exists in a modernist world between the two sides of socialism, left and right. However, once you move into postmodernism, this has to do with Ram Das. You now shift your focus, and there is no longer left right, but rather it's nihilist and anarchist, with nothing else in between. What happens is you have a fundamental de-evolution of society with socialism and humanism. It goes right back to tribalism again. And then again, once again you'll have tribalism on the left uh, on the left with the, the nihilistic the rural tribes, and then you'll have anarchists who are tribalists. The anarchists who are tribalists become your warlords. And so the cycle of society, and we see this in history, particularly in ancient history, the collapse of civilizations, you see how this comes into play and becomes the sort of the progenitor of the next generation. There is a view that mankind needs to evolve to the next level in order to properly get back to the, what's called the true state. And so what happens, you try, this is, the whole thing is they try to get to this thing called Uberman. And the Uberman is the Superman. And it's the ultimate humanist goal. However, the state of Uberman is fictitious. It's not real. There is no real Uberman. So the, 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 the stated goal to achieve Uberman never succeeds because it's always sitting in this, what do you call, 
basically a, a fictitious environment. It is a, well, a, 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 a matrix. And it depends on where you sit within the matrix, or indeed outside the matrix, that's what you see. Those within the matrix see something different. This is what they use the term woke. But as I said before, when you're woke, what are you, you have to ask yourself the question, what are you woke into? Because you could be very simply woke into another dream. You don't have it woke completely. And so what happens, left, right, socialist, Marxist, really depends on, on, on how you see something. So one Marxist does not necessarily have to agree with another. A study of the Russian Revolution, the Communist Revolution, will reveal this. That not only did you have the Leninist Revolution, called the so-called Bolshevik Revolution, but you also had one who were also Marxist by Trotsky and another, and the final one, by Stalin. And what happens with this, in the Soviet Union is you have basically a tribal warlord state in which the head of the government, the king, becomes the, the, sort of the leader, the communist leader becomes sort of what we'll call an elected king who holds all the power all the, and everything else. Anxious drivers. This is the state of communism. The goal is to create communism, to create this this ultra nationalist state that has people sort of in a panic. And in this panic, they become helpless and need and want their government. They, they, the government comes in and becomes the end all and be all. And what's happened is, that this is with the so-called pandemic, is a lot of people have become extremely paranoid and in their fear are clinging to rules. And believe that by following the rules and making pronouncements about their faithfulness to the rules, this includes turning other people in, rule, break, rule breakers in, that they are protecting society, that they're protecting people. And the reality is they're not protecting anybody. But again, again, belief is extremely strong. Faith, because it's based on emotion, no matter what that faith is, faith in mankind, so on and so forth. No matter what the faith is, the faith will over will override any sense of logic, any sense of any sense of reality. And in faith, a reality itself is created. And you'll see this amongst the academics too. The, the, you know, academics have their faith in academics. Academics is a belief. And they will create their own reality. This is based on a paper uh, recently written by an academic. And so how do you know what the paper is? You know, whether it's academic or not. Well, the person is not an actual medical doctor. Begins with the title of doctor as philosopher, and and, and proudly pronounces his status 
by the, using the term doctor when it's not nearly necessary. And here you're dealing with an intellectual, once again, you're dealing with another level of intellectual. The intellectual sees things from their own view, from their own perspective, and their own reality. And he begins making pronouncements. It wasn't simply a research paper, it was, it, it was a, a series of pronouncements. But it didn't really amount to much of anything because the study that I'm doing is not necessarily, it's not academic in many cases. The work done by Voltaire was made upon a series of pronouncements. Except he didn't do his own work. And you can go out and actually take a look and you can actually see who actually did the work. This, this was primarily his basis work on Newton, Leibniz, and uh, uh, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Descartes. This is the the basis for Voltaire. I have to get my GoPro started. <laughs> I, I I vlog all this. No, no, just just I have a vlog on the internet. It's called uh, Our Life is Cyborg Alpha. And there's one called the Road Vlog. And uh, that's, I, I, I have a discussion as I drive. <laughs> yeah, so I vlog while I drive. Anyways, I'm out. Have a good night. See you, well, if you're out here tomorrow, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Trying out my turn signals. It's uh, still the 20th of June. It is about uh, 21 hours into the day. Okay, here we go. Still figuring out how to get this uh, thing to work. It's working okay. I just I have to press the uh, button more than just simply a momentary thing to get it to turn on and turn off. So I was pressing it too fast. Yeah, so I have to be more deliberate in my actions. Anyways, we can get back to our discussion. This will be sort of a continuation of what we came in with. Oh. We had a nice Father's Day. My, my, uh, the rest of my family, my brother came over with his wife and my nieces and stuff like that. So we had a very good day. Uh, quite interesting. Uh, but I was kind of wiped. I was kind of wiped out today, so uh, I was significantly more subdued than I would have been if. Uh, it hadn't been such a, you know, it hadn't been, uh, it hadn't been, uh, sort of wiped out. I had sort of got up last night around 6 o'clock in the morning. Well, actually, I didn't get to bed at 6 o'clock in the morning. 
that was my final sleep in the time. No cars there, so it was easy to get out. And the thing is, is about this whole issue of it was uh, based on a song from the 1970s and this sort of connects to Ram Das. and it surrounds the whole concept of love now what happens is that most of the they call the theists the world is divided into theists and atheists. Um, and the atheists don't believe in anything. And, and, it, and it devolves into postmodernism, into nihilism, into tribalism. This is where we are currently in terms of the socialist model. And the socialist model, you want to look at it, you go back to humanism see how it evolved out of the Catholic and the Protestant churches to what it is currently today but there's a breaking point again around the psychologists and the sociologists at the time but it goes down to a point of basically two people uh, the modernists were basically Anna Freud and uh, Edward Bernays the postmodernists basically center around Timothy Leary and uh, his partner, his research partner, Ram Das. So this is, these are the two points you want to take a look at, Timothy Leary and Ram Das. And they were backed by drug companies. And it was a major drug, a major drug experimentation in terms of what's called the expansion of the mind that sort of the we call the the summer of love emerged between 68 and ended by 1972 the summer of love had ended and the concept was that love was every anything and you'll, and you'll hear this today in, in, in the in the advertisements here love is louder right this is what the type of black lights matter and stuff like that same group of people. They were the so-called. They were the nihilists. The protesters that we saw were the postmodernist anarchists. And the anarchists have their motto, like the nihilists, that nothing exists, everything is a concept. But rather than being peaceful and about love, uh, they're about deconstructing society, deconstructing the establishment. So they're a violent form of uh, anti-establishment because they believe in the complete destruction of of what we we'll call the established society. And this is what we sort of see in uh, the UN documents like 2021 and uh, 2030, you know, Agenda 21, Agenda 30. We see the sort of co the postmodernist anarchist sort of uh, philosophy uh, coming in there. What brings it home is uh, the Ram Dass aspect. The connected to Hinduism. They talk about emanations of the emanation of love. And the thing is again, the, the whole thing of love is louder. Well it's a, it's a love because a love of everything. And it includes and this is where it becomes the left hand path. It's the left hand love includes everything including physical love. But then in other words sexuality, homosexuality is classified as love. And it can be love between anything. Man and a woman, man and a horse, uh, two men, two women, transgender, 
men and women and children, I mean, uh, adults and children are the same. There is no limitation because it's all about so-called this whole thing, the emanation of love. It all sits within the within the realms of magic. Yeah. And so these are these are these are this evolution on Ram Dass side moves the tribalism which became popular in the 1960s and I just in the 1970s. Uh, was a form of what we call theistic tribalism. And I call it theistic tribalism. Because is to move back to a tribal society, but a non, but, a, but with a belief in God, and this is what happens in with a number of these people. As we watch what happens by the ni- by 1972, the summer of love ended as the reality set in. This, the summer of love, which began in 1968, with the hippies, ended four years later, in 1972, with massive amounts of drug addiction. And this was the first ser- your first series of uh, homelessness and stuff like that. It really reset things because now the homeless are no longer just simply people who are simply mentally ill. You had a, a cause, and this was drug addiction. Drug addiction drove people out onto the streets. And of course, with drug addiction, you get a lot of violence. So what happens is that the whole, the whole concept of open love completely collapsed into uh, drug, and, drug and alcohol abuse. And of course, within within that, the, the violence, domestic violence, uh, continued as well. So the whole the, the, the dream died. 